good morning all of you in the last class we have discussed about the physical test of sewage and today we will discuss about the chemical test of sewage the chemical test of sewage is carried out for the determination of following factors such as chlorine fat grease and oil nitrogen dissolved oxygen bod cod ph value and total solids so the now we will discuss in detail about this factors so first one is chlorine so chlorine is required in order to break up the organic matter that are present in sewage and also for killing the pathogenic bacteria so it is uh, generally available in two form one is chlorine demand second one is residual chlorine so first chlorine demand uh, the unstable organic matter which are present in sewage has a demand for chlorine so if and if proper disinfection is carried out this demand of chlorine should be satisfied first so this amount of chlorine which is required for the for this purpose is known as chlorine demand second one is residual chlorine so after the treatment of sewage it is necessary to chlorinate it in order to kill the bacteria present in it if residual chlorine comes out after 15 minutes of its application then it is assumed that the reduction of bacteria from sewage is sufficient then grease fat and oil the presence of these materials are undesirable in sewage as they may disturb the working of the filter as well as treatment plant and the quantity of the oily substances is determined by evaporating the sample of sewage then after evaporation the remaining substances are dissolved in ether and when ether is evaporated it gives the quantity of grease fat and oil present in the sewage second factor is nitrogen nitrogen may be present in sewage in four different form it may be present in form the form of free ammonia albuminoid ammonia nitrite and nitrates the presence of free ammonia indicates that the sewage is stale or it is in septic condition the presence of albuminoid ammonia indicates the on decomposed nitrogenous matter the next one is the nitrite nitrite indicate the intermediate stage of uh, decomposition that is the intermediate stage of conversion of organic matter into stable form then fourth one is nitrates this indicate the more stable form of nitrogenous matter so the nitrite is generally predominant in the stale sewage or the septic sewage and nitrates will predominate in well oxidized sewage 
the nitrates are generally responsible for blue baby syndrome that we have already discussed in our water supply part next factor is dissolved oxygen so the presence of dissolved oxygen in raw sewage indicates that the sewage is fresh and the presence of dissolved oxygen in the effluent that means the output that is obtained after treatment so the presence of dissolved oxygen in the effluent indicates that oxidation has been accomplished by the sewage treatment method the clean surface water is generally found to be saturated with dissolved oxygen but this dissolved oxygen can be easily consumed by the oxygen demand of the organic waste present in water that means the organic waste the waste material which are present in water they will consume this dissolved oxygen in for their for uh, fulfilling their demand for oxygen and they get oxidized next factor is bod generally the oxygen is required in sewage for the oxidation of inorganic matter and organic matter so this demand of oxygen by organic matter in sewage is known as biochemical oxygen demand or in short you can say it as bod the bacteria which are present in water have the capacity of taking up the oxygen from water and they get energy by decomposing the organic matter into co2 that is carbon dioxide and water h2o in the presence of oxygen so this requirement of oxygen is called as your bod so this test is necessary to know the amount of oxygen required by the bacteria for oxidizing the organic matter under aerobic condition that means aerobic condition means the in presence of air and it is generally done for 5 days this test is generally done for 5 days or 10 days at standard temperature of 20 degree celsius and this test will help to know the strength of the sewage and to know the amount of clear water required for the disposal of sewage by dilution so the bod test is carried out by the dilution method in this method first the dissolved oxygen in that is present in clear water is found out and noted down then the sample of sewage is diluted by water and the dilution ratio is noted generally it is taken as 1 is to 100 that means one part of sewage sample and 100 part of water then the diluted sewage is kept in an air tight vessel for 5 days at 20 degree celsius in an incubator then after this period the amount of dissolved oxygen in the bottle is worked out in the first first before 
adding the sample of sewage we have noted down the dissolved oxygen that is present in the clear water and after the completion of the period that is 5 days then again the dissolved oxygen in the glass bottle is measured then loss of the oxygen is determined so the 5 day bod can be found out by multiplying the loss of oxygen with dilution ratio and the result is uh, written in terms of ppm parts per million so this is how the test for bod is carried out the next factor is cod the amount of oxygen required for the chemical oxidation of organic matter by a strong oxidizing agent under acidic condition is known as chemical oxygen demand or in short cod so this test is required to know the content of organic matter which should be so this test is carried out to know the content of organic matter which should be oxidized by chemical oxidizing agents and only uh, this COD test is necessary for the industrial sewage and it will take only 5 hours for the decomposition of organic matter whereas BOD test is necessary for domestic sewage and it requires at least 5 days for the decomposition of organic matter. Uh, so this test is carried out in the following way. So first a known amount of sample of sewage is taken and a known amount of potassium dichromate and sulfuric acid are added to the sample. Then the mixture is kept for about 3 hours. So during this period chemical reaction uh, takes place and it will produce CO2 and H2O. So after the reaction is over the remaining amount of potassium dichromate that means after the reaction the amount of potassium dichromate is determined by the process of titration with ferrous ammonia sulfate solution and The consumption of dichromate will indicate the amount of oxygen required for the oxidation of organic matter. So in this manner the COD test is performed. Next factor is pH value. The pH value of sewage is determined in order to know its nature. That means whether it is acidic or alkaline. So the treatment method will depend upon the pH value. So at the beginning the fresh sewage is alkaline in nature. And it will convert to acidic after few hours and the bacteria cannot survive in acidic sewage. So the fresh sewage is alkaline and septic sewage is acidic in nature. Okay. Then next So it is very essential to know the quantity of 
total solid in sewage because it helps to know the rate of deposition of sludge in the primary sedimentation tank so this amount of total solid can be found out by the following procedure so first a known amount of sewage is taken and the water is evaporated at 100 degree celsius then the residue that is obtained is dried properly and weighed so the weight of the dry residue represent the total solid so the weight will represent the total solid and this total solid may be volatile or suspended solid so in order to get the amount of volatile solid the dried total solid are heated or ignited in electric furnace so after ignition the remaining solid are weighed then the loss of weight will indicate the volatile solids that are present in sewage and these volatile solids are due to the presence of organic matter so this is how volatile solids are measured then suspended solids the solids which settle down are known as suspended or settleable solids so this can be found out by uh, taking a conical glass vessel which is known as imhoff cone generally the capacity of this cone is 1 liter and it is graduated in milliliter from the bottom the sample of sewage of quantity 1 liter is taken in the cone and it is allowed to rest for about 2 hours then the amount of solid settled at the bottom of the cone is read from the graduations see this one is the imhoff cone the diagram picture of a of an imhoff cone so here the sample is collected at the bottom so it is it can be measured by the graduations then to know the exact amount of settleable solids the moisture from the sediment is removed and weighed so that we can so in this method we can find out the amount of suspended solids so this is all about for today's class and about the chemical test we have covered and in the next class we will discuss about the biological test thank you